Hi, you guys. Um, this is our last and final skill category video, and it's all about scale. Um, it's going to be quite a bit shorter than the last one where I was going over two different skill categories. This one only has four learning objectives, um, so it'll go by pretty fast. Um, but yeah, it's it's probably like the second to the last video that I'm going to record for you. Um, I'll probably do like a quick overview for the week. So probably, or at least I hope you probably saw that. Um, but yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. As always, I hope you guys are doing pretty well. Um, I am currently on a Sunday sitting outside on my patio. It is gorgeous out here. Um, very, very, very much ready for the warm weather. And I'm absolutely positive that you guys are probably too. So, all right, let's just get started. Um, so we have gone through skill category one, two, three, and four. So we are on our last one. And notice how this, of all of them, is the very shortest. Um, so we're going to start by talking about the identify. And as um, I've already mentioned several times, identify is not going to show up on the AP test in a week and a day. Um, but it's probably helpful that you at least understand the identify because it sort of like drives the um, understanding of the other learning targets as well. So I'm just going to spend a minute talking about this. So 5A says identify the scales presented by maps, quantitative and geospatial data, images and landscapes. And, um, and so I just want to remind you that when you're looking at scale, there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually look at scale, right? When you're looking just at scale, um, that's whatever it is that you're looking at. So if you're looking at a world map, the scale is global, right? If you're looking at a map of the United States, the scale is national. But when you're looking at scale of analysis, what you're looking at is how the data is presented, how the data is aggregated. So um, there is no global scale of analysis unless you are looking at an image like, like this right here. So like the moon's like, hey, Earth, what's up? And the Earth's like, yeah, nothing good, moon, nothing good, which probably the Earth maybe wouldn't be saying right now, since actually um, the one thing that coronavirus has done well for the Earth is clean it up a little bit. Um, but it, it's, I don't know, it's a meme, it's funny, you know me, I'm kind of weird like that. So, um, so when we're talking about scale of analysis, you will never ever say something is global. But if you are talking about just regular old scale and the map shows the world, then yeah, that's global scale. Um, so, um, again, yeah, I don't know. That, that's enough for that. So let's do some practice. So when we're looking at these two maps, um, share of the population using the internet in 2017, and then you can see that B is the same map. Um, the scale for this map, for map A, is global. The scale for map B is more regional, I guess. This would be like the Asian continent um, minus like Russia, but mostly Asia. Um, and But the scale of analysis for both of them is the same, the same. So what you're looking at in terms of scale of analysis here is country or national. Um, for this one, because you can add, all, and if you did your FRQ, you know this well as well, that you, you don't just need a map to determine scale. Like you can determine scale based on graphs as well. So for this one, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, et cetera, this one would be continent or I suppose regional would um, be okay for that. But if you wanted to say both, if uh, an FRQ question came up where you had to identify scale of analysis, you could say both just to make yourself safe. Um, this one is also national, as you can see, global scale, but scale of analysis is national. And then I think I have one more. And then this is really what we've been practicing all year, this idea that changing scale can change your understanding of a topic. So all of these maps have to do with population density. So you can see that the scale is different for each one of them. So scale is global, national, state, but the scale of analysis is national, state level, um, county. Um, so it kind of changes. And again, scale of analysis especially with this Georgia map, you can kind of see it. It really tells you, like, you're looking at how the data is being presented. So, like, when you see variations in color on these chloroplast maps, what is the variation of color? How is that being represented? And, again, in all of these maps, it's pretty pretty obvious. Um, okay, so let's move on to what you could potentially see on your um, test. So 5B says explain the spatial relationship across various geographic scales using geographic concepts, process, models, or theories. So this one is explain why some countries build barriers on their borders. Um, 
I mean, hopefully this one would be like an absolute no brainer to you. Um, so this is a combination political and um, population migration question. So most of you should probably answer that borders are built for a variety of different reasons. A lot of times it has to do with stemming the flow of migration. Um, uh, you read a little bit, or you saw the video last week about this particular border right here. It's again, kind of um, controlling migration, but also um, ensuring state relationships. So Morocco special or relationship with, I think it was Morocco, right? Yeah, Morocco special relationship with the EU, and so on and so forth. So um, there's a variety of ways that you could answer this, but remember that explain always has the term because. So, you know, countries build barriers on their borders because they're trying to control migration, establish relationships between countries, et cetera, et cetera. We've hit this concept enough. Um, another one for this particular learning target might be explain how the legacy of col colonialism and imperialism and impacted current cultural patterns of language in. <laughs> weird space, Africa at the national scale of analysis. So now you're looking at the scale of analysis is country, um, but it's kind of weird because it shows more regional patterns as well. Um, but you would have a key for this. I just didn't copy the key because it was awkwardly placed, but each color represents a different colonial language. And of course, this one, you would have to talk about um, how Africa was carved up, um, maybe even bring in your knowledge of the Berlin Conference um, and then, you know, always add the word because. So, you know, the reason why this region um, speaks French and Nigeria speaks English and so do the other yellow ones and you might have some there as well and so on and so forth is because that's the countries or those are the countries that took them over um, during the period of imperialism as you can see. Okay, um, 5C, compare geographic characteristics and processes at various scales. And you guys, I, I, I've already kind of talked about this a little bit, but it, it seems to, and I actually accepted my invite to the reading, so I'll be able to tell you much more information at the you know end of the middle of June when this whole thing ends. Um, but I really think that the expectation is that you guys are, um, because you have to demonstrate your learning in such a small amount of space, like you don't get the multiple choice questions and whatnot, um, you really want to make sure that you're not overwriting, but you're not underwriting either. Compare is one of those verbs that I'm starting to realize is a little bit more complicated than a one to two sentence like summary of what you see. So when you're comparing, you want to provide a description or an explanation. So you're doing that first, and then you're doing your comparison. So um, the reason why you have, I have this apple and orange on a balance um, is because like you, you can look at this and you can say, okay, so if you're going to compare what you see in the image here, um, both of these objects are clearly fruit, right? They both grow on trees or, you know, whatever you want to say, but they are also clearly different because one of them you have to peel and one of them you don't have to, you know, so like an apple is something that you can, um, I don't know, you can describe the flavor, you could describe the texture. Um, in orange, you could describe the process that you would have to eat in orange. And then um, in doing so, you're actually comparing. So um, just make sure that when you do a compare, and trust me, there's gonna be a compare, um, you wanna make sure that you are talking about both things, that you are describing both things, you're explaining both things, you're doing or taking the next necessary steps to make sure that you are demonstrating your understanding of both of the things that you're being asked to compare. So um, if you were at the, um, if you were at the, uh, um, the political review session, you saw that we went over this FRQ again, but here's a different way that these two maps could be used. So compare how the concepts of centrifugal and centripetal forces apply at the specific individual state scale. So obviously state scale is what you're seeing here because you're seeing like the country of Spain and the country of Nigeria. And notice how it doesn't say scale of analysis. So it's not actually, actually asking you to break it down into the regional areas, but you would probably talk about that anyway, um, because in both cases, and the centrifugal force is sort of the driving factor here um, with those areas like in Spain, for example, Catalan and the Basque, and then in Nigeria, north versus south. And you could talk about what those forces are. So if we were talking about Nigeria, you would say the Christian south or the um, uh, Muslim north. These are centripetal forces that divide the country because um, the 
the religion is actually what divides it or whatever it is. Um, and centripetal forces, I think, would be a little bit harder for this particular question. I mean, I might just talk about how, you know, within these regions, there's a united um, nationalist sort of feel, um, which is the centripetal force for the region, but a centrifugal force for the state. So something like that is probably how you would want to talk about these um, two maps. All right, this is the last one. So this is one of those, The remember that this is like the, the oh, I don't know if it's the hardest, but it's the one that AP seems to emphasize most often as being like the quote unquote unicorn point. So the separation between the fours and the fives is essentially what they're saying here. So I picked kind of an easy one for you for this one. It says explain the degree again. So how truthful or how, mm, not truthful, maybe like how accurate is whatever the stimulus is that you're looking at and what are the issues with the stimulus that you're looking at. So to a degree, it's accurate, but to a, another degree, it's not accurate. So explain the degree to which a geographic concept process model or theory effectively explain geographic concepts across various geographic scales. It's like maddening. They're so wordy, these like learning targets. But essentially, if you're looking at this map, which you've seen before, um, the map title is predominant church affiliation by county. So we know it's a county scale of analysis, but it's a national scale map. Um, and the prompt says explain the limitation of the following map as it relates to religious representation in the United States. Um, well, you, you're not told because you, you need to come in with this knowledge what um, religious group X, Y and Z actually are. Um, but you know that religious group Z, or you should know that religious group Z is Baptist and religious group Y is Lutheran and religious group X is Mormon. But there's, and that's great. Like it tells you exactly where those three religions are located. But what the map doesn't tell you, so this is limitation. The limitation is that it doesn't tell you what is practiced in the rest of the country. So all those counties that are white could be Catholic, could be some other version of Protestantism, some other um denomination of protestantism could be atheist like we're really missing a, a large chunk of what the rest of the united states is actually practicing in terms of religious affiliation so that would be a good example of explain the limitation um this is more of a explain the degree so it's not really a, a limitation so much but this is an explain the degree of impact that gender empowerment has on growth rates of development at national scale. Now, remember, this is not my favorite prompt, but I like that it used images um, and the rest of the information that I'm presenting today is just really maps. This one is images, of course. So you're talking about national scale. So you guys know that at a local scale, that when you empower women, that can really change sort of the local environment, the local town, village, whatever that this is asking you to consider national scale. And um, the map on the left is, is showing you solar power. The map on the right is looks like a girl is on a cell phone. Um, and so you want to consider in your answer in some way referring back to the images. So in terms of growth rates of development, how can solar power, um, and you see all the women in the background, how can solar power help the women um, and you know, in terms of helping the women that we're talking about getting them to school or some sort of like education as it relates to agriculture or something along those lines. Um, how can uh, solar power help you explain how gender empowerment and solar power are A, connected and B, what that does to the rates of development in a particular country? The same is true for that the picture on the right, right? So a woman clearly has access to technology through the use of cell phones. So A, why is that empowering for her? And B, how does that help um, improve or increase growth rates of development at a country level? So that's what you have to really consider in your answer if you get something like this. Remember, 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 it, the stimulus is gonna be vitally important. And if you have not referred to the stimulus, you have not answered the question in the way that you're supposed to. So um, I think that that is my last slide. Um, and that is my last skills presentation. So um, I hope it helps. I hope you've been watching them. And I hopefully will see you guys later this morning because we have a lot to talk about. Um, okay. Um, hopefully I already saw you. Bye, you guys.